Okay, this is part three. Um, Cindy, go ahead. You were talking about uh, your uncle or your dad. What was his name? When I was the police officer, diversionized or whatever you call it. I don't even know what to call it. No, but first, who is he? He told me he was a but highway Paul patrol. Martin, who was a high motorcycle policeman, highway patrolman, very high top rank, Bakersfield, California. A mason? Was he, he a mason? He was a mason. He was a shriner. He was very high up in that clout of people. He, when he performed his act on me, he was promised real estate for, li for life. They gave him. They gave him a whole mountain called Cherry Hill, Signal Hill in Long Beach, California. It was a property worth millions. He owned it. They gave this to the cop for you. For me, because of me, he got that. Because he gave you over to the woman that raised you. And because he did what he was told. But he couldn't handle being seen it, so he left you with the woman, the, your mom, right? Because he, he was told bad. to bow out. Shut up, tree. I'm sorry. He was told to bow out. With my real father, they killed his brother. But because he didn't agree with what was going on, and they were afraid that he was going to go to the police or he was going to try to stop what was going on with me, they put him in an insurance company of his own, and he never looked the other way again. He never believed me when I went to him to tell him the stories. He just told me, well, that's your life. And he was a police officer in Long Beach? No, that was my stepfather, my real father, who was about, told to bow out of the whole situation. He was the one that was, had his own insurance company given to him. And his name? William R. Thompson. And the people ahead of that, the ringleaders you were, that gave him the oil well? Or they gave him the insurance company and the other guy the oil well. What was their names? Margarito. And how do you spell that? They were from Palermo, Sicily. How do you spell it? M A R G A R A T O. Then there was the Sabatazos. The what? Sabatazos. S Sabatasso? How you spell it? S A B I T I S O. Okay. So uh, so they got paid off, your dad and your stepdad, and you got left with your mom, which was the one that did the torture. Yes. But in between that I got pregnant. I was the only one of all the children that had been diversionalized who got pregnant and I was so happy. I was going to have a baby, but that's not how it went. That's not what the rule was to get rid of the baby before anybody knew. And of course they had their own doctors, so I was taken to a place in Beverly Hills of course, I think everybody knows where Beverly Hills is. That's where the rich people are. My uncle, I guess he was my uncle, was a doctor. They tied me down in a bed in a room in a house. Like tied you down how? Like they went in a sale asylum, like if somebody was crazy. They tied my legs spread apart open. They tied my arms up over my head. They tied my neck. They tied my stomach. They tied the top of my legs. They tied everything down that they had to. But So you couldn't even move? I couldn't move. All I could do was lay there and 
Were there yeah. police officers outside, you said, that were guarding the... No, that was when I had my own daughter. Okay, At this place, nobody knew about. There was nobody there but the doctor, Barbara, Paul, and me. It had been set up by other people, but we were the only ones there. I laid there, no anesthesia, no, nobody saying, oh, here comes the baby. Everybody. It was all, everybody was mad. Everybody around me was calling me names, was just making me feel like I killed somebody, like I was the worst piece of shit on the earth, having a baby, a decent baby. And I laid there, and I screamed, and I screamed, and they just kept telling me, just shut up. And then I saw her head coming out and I wanted to grab her. I wanted to save her and I couldn't. And how did they pull her out? And the next thing I saw when they saw her head coming out, they grabbed these things that look like meat cleavers like they use with cattle and they stuck them in her ears and they pulled her out. And then I didn't see her again. I just, they laid me back down, just dropped my forehead down. And next thing they came to me, and they held up in a bag, a body. And I couldn't even tell if she was my baby, but I know she was beautiful. And I, and I called her Jasmine Marie. She was my Jasmine Marie. And they said, behold your child. I dumped her in a trash can. And I don't remember too much after that. I don't remember leaving. I don't remember how long I stayed there, what they did to me afterwards. You don't, you don't, you're back and she's skipping over a part that she's brought right now. She's skipping over a part she's having a hard time with. Um, between the baby being born and the trash bag. And that's the part that she's having a hard time with. I don't know what they had done to her in between me having her and the showing her to me. I don't know what they did. I'll never know what you they You started did. to remember the other day, remember? She's, we're trying, right now we're trying to, this, she's never talked about this before, ever. She's never done this. and. But we want you guys out there to know, anybody that's going through this, that you're not alone and you have a safe place here with us. We love you and we protect you. Um, I'm sorry, we'll be back, okay?